Now, yeah. you know, a lot of things have changed over the last decade. And <laughs> yeah, I don't you better believe a lot of stuff changed. Yeah. This country's going to hell in a handbasket. More I, corruption. See, that's, the, that's the difference between us. You're afraid of everything, and you just think that everything is going down the toilet, and there's absolutely no redeeming value to anything we do. But I don't. I look at the, the positive You're an side officer. Of Are you an officer? I it was both, actually. You're on a power trip. Uh, you know, Absolutely I've, not. Yeah, Absolutely I've seen not. the incredible footage in Houston and Denver of them lying to teenage kids saying, you'll go to jail if you don't come sign this paperwork. And then they, were, they promoted the recruiters who lie and threaten kids. Do you ever do stuff like that when you're a recruiter? Absolutely never, never. Do I, have I heard cases about it? Absolutely. And those recruiters are prosecuted. And I've seen it happen because I've seen recruiters. Wait a minute. The lie. Denver, the uh, they got promoted. You, you, uh, <laughs> All right, I've had enough of you. I appreciate the call. As soon as he told us foreign troops, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, the military, if we need them, use them on the streets. But, but to say that there's no problem with that is the concern I have. It, he admits that they're here. Uh, and when I yeah, wrote, but 10 years ago, he'd have denied that. Yeah, See, but when, I, a, when I wrote my first book uh, back in 1994 uh, from my cold dead fingers, it has in there that 5,000 Chinese troops were here in America. And the question was why? Why I've got cooperative here? nugget footage you know, where foreign Eastern Europeans train against American role players in towns that look like the U.S. But the real reason that if you came up with the answer was because they're not bound by our Constitution, they're not bound by any oath, and they will just follow orders. Sheriff, everybody knows that the Russians would, would train from Eastern Russia 3,000 miles over to Western Russia mm -hmm. to use it on a crowd. The Chinese at right. Tiananmen Square, it took them 10 hours to respond because they brought them in from 800 miles away, a whole yep. different ethnic group. Everybody knows you. You don't use troops from the area because when their uncle's out there with a gun and a picket line, they're going to say, forget this and join their uncle. And how did we Idiot. stop? And how did we get somebody to do something at Tiananmen Square? A citizen stands in the way of a tank. That's one of the most uh, remarkable photographs ever taken in the last 100 years. A citizen standing in the way, and that is what we have to do with our sheriffs and local officials against the corruption of our own government. We have to have sheriffs willing to interpose themselves. Sheriff Mack, on the I agree. I was interviewing you 10 years ago, and I remember you saying <laughs> they're going to start using troops on the streets, they're breaking it down, and people would call you conspiracy terrorists. Now it's admitted, and this guy calls in and goes, yeah, I'm an officer, and I think it's a great idea. But don't, uh, but don't, but don't take it to the level where you think everything's bad. <laughs> but I'm afraid of everything. Kind of like George Washington yeah. and Thomas Jefferson said, government is dangerous, like fire. It's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Right. I, I mean, you know. We're, and we're all, the only thing I'm after is I want to be left alone. Randy Weaver, the only thing he wanted was to be left alone. All over the country, you can't even grow gardens at your house when there's not yeah. even a law. Yeah, and, and it's just getting so ridiculous. And, and now the state legislature of... Texas was standing against the TSA, and they were threatened by the federal government, and they backed off. You know why this guy's listening? He's looking for fault because he doesn't sound like a bad guy. He's made excuses, yeah. and he's trying to rationalize what he's doing. Well, and to, make, and to rationalize what government is doing all over the place, and, and, I, and I don't see anything. Watching what's going on in Washington, D.C. right now, how could anybody say... Something good is happening. When this country wasn't perfect, but was better than any other, the, the government gave people land because they wanted folks to have children and prosper. Yeah. Okay, now, and I just got chills again, because this, I, see, I didn't used to get these chills. I'm so upset at a fundamental level, it's such common sense. All, almost everybody I know, and in, in family I have in West Texas and East Texas and other areas, can't pay. And over the decades, they've sold off more and more family land to where now they're down to 20, 30, 40 acres. And it's, it's where the homestead is. They love it. They work in town during the day. They work on the cows and the fence on the weekend. And the government's getting rid of the tax exemptions and raising sales taxes and everybody's losing their land. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me there's nothing wrong with America? We're losing our very way of life. We've I, I, lost our soul. We've lost the American soul. Uh, Pat Buchanan, when he ran for president back in uh, uh, 1996, was saying these very same things. He was talking about the New World Order. He was talking about uh, protecting our borders. That's the biggest Ross one right Perot there. Ross Perot told us NAFTA and GATT would deindustrialize us. They called him a fearful person. Right. He was absolutely right. And so was Pat Buchanan, especially about protecting our borders. He saw it then, and people called him crazy and uh, an isolationist, an isolationist. And it turned out now it's all bitten us back on the butt, and wow, 
Now nobody says that. And what's their Buchanan answer? More there. globalism. Sheriff Mack, tell us exactly. about your speaking to her. SheriffMack.com on to jam in a few more calls here. But, uh, but you know, tell us what's coming up next. Well, I'm going to be speaking in Florida at the rally against the TSA. The Libertarian Party is uh, uh, getting a lot of different groups, a lot of Tea Party groups and 912 groups together. This coming Sunday, my wife and I will be there in Daytona Beach. Come on over to the rally. It's uh, that afternoon, this Sunday afternoon. Go to my website. You can see the information. And all the great books because right you need support. Traveling all over the country. Uh, the, the best book in the country for, for, exa for finding the solution to what's going on in our country is The County Sheriff, America's Last Hope. Get that on my website. Get it to every sheriff. They need to be knee-deep in them. But every citizen needs to read it, too. You've got to know what to tell your sheriff is his duty to protect you. And, 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 and buy a bunch and give them to local sheriff's deputies. Absolutely. Let's, let's go to uh, Jeff in Georgia. And make somebody gives one to Josh, our Skip last this caller. Break. Thank you. Uh, we're going to skip this program a little bit longer here. I'm never going to get my work done on the TV show, 7 o'clock tonight, PrisonPlanet.tv. Jeff in Georgia, what would you think of the last guy? Uh, I think he's trying to rationalize why he goes to work every day, because I am an active duty officer. I think he read the uh, oath a little different, but I don't take no oath to the governor or the state or anything. That's what I As told officer, Alex. The difference between the officer oath and the enlisted oath, he is correct, is the enlisted guy does take an oath, to the President of the United States, the officer specifically and only to the Constitution. And that's why it's important for officers to know the Constitution so they know what orders they're giving. Yeah, I was the reading the general, I was reading the general enlisted, yes. Right, so... But well, I that's why before, is, officers had to be always commissioned by Congress so people knew, hey, you work for the people, not, not El Presidente. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I appreciate everything you're doing, long-time caller, or long-time listener, prison planet member, and uh, first-time caller. What did you but, think uh, of that guy? I think, like I said, I, they laugh at me at work every day when I try to tell them, you know, like, I'll, we, ha we actually had a point where we were having a big officer meeting, and the guy on part-time uh, works with the police department he said hey they're gonna be doing random seatbelt checks and registration checks everything i said hey we just had a guy get promoted say the oath of office which violates the fourth amendment and they all laughed at me you know i mean they i mean they just laugh and laugh and laugh and they just nobody is awake so they you're a police officer off. you're no, a i'm an active duty naval officer okay so but i mean the issue here is for anybody that laughs at the constitution well it, okay all oh, we can run a checkpoint without a warrant but then next, oh, we can take your bank account for no reason. Right. Or, or the police chief can fire the mayor because we say so. Folks, if you don't have the Constitution Bill of Rights, you are now in hearts of darkness. You want to explain that to him, Sheriff? Well, that's, that's, I think it's so typical, though. Look at what's going on around you. You'll see it yourself. The callers, everybody. We have, now we have a naval officer calling that is seeing the world completely opposite of Josh. And all we're talking about here is look what's going on. Don't believe me. Don't believe you. Check it out for yourself, just like the caller said. Check it out you for yourself. You heard that guy's denial. He thought I would put out a fake video of troops running across <laughs> right the street New York City. and screaming at him. Of course those are troops. I mean, uh, uh, listen, how many people that you talk to at, at work in the Navy are, are, are even halfway awake? Less than a third. I mean, because they're so they they just want you to keep your head down. They keep you so occupied. They keep you so busy. They don't want you lifting your head up and looking above the bushes. You know, they just keep you task, task, task. Yeah. Well, it's you know, a, I mean, that's sad. That's really sad. You know, and uh, and I you know I respect Josh for calling in, and I respect somebody who who uh, or I understand how somebody wants to rationalize everything and make their job look. Uh, decent and what the, what law enforcement officers who say well you know we just have to enforce the laws you know and i've got to keep my job you know i'm not i don't agree with that anymore if you're going to prostitute yourself to keep your job then we don't need well, you. look it started in germany at first with hitler little things yeah exactly. violate the weimar republic constitution mm -hmm. and pretty soon after you violated a bunch of little things the, 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 i mean there's nothing holding us there there's nothing under us anymore the Constitution is a shield against tyranny, folks. It's our, it's, it's like the magnetic field of the Earth. If we didn't have that magnetic field, the Earth would set on fire within hours. That's, right. it, it's like the magnetic shield of the Earth. I mean, you were trying to say something, Jeff. Go ahead. I, I mean, to be honest with you, during the first Gulf War, I was, I was totally asleep, ready to go, doing all the stuff they wanted you to do. But you, each individual citizen needs to find out what wakes them up. What woke me up was the public school system and money and reading President Andrew Jackson's farewell address about the banking elite, 
learning about Keynesian economics, how they're stealing your money throughout. Because, you know, I mean, I was a muscle car guy. I wanted, always wanted a car, and I could, it was always out of reach. When I could afford 3000 it was 6 When I could afford <laughs> 6 they were 12 when, they, when I could afford 12 they were 20 <laughs> you know, so you got to find out what wakes you up. But I mean, I sat down and cried three days for three days when I saw how that I had sent my three daughters basically to an indoctrination corruption camp to be used against me. You know, and I thought I was doing indoctrination the right thing. camp. You're talking teachers. about you're talking about public schools, right? Correct. Yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, folks, so, we are under social engineering. And it makes me sick to watch these globalists get away with it. Once you get out of their trance and their con and, and know it's a con, yeah. it's how con artists work, then you realize how dumb I was ever buying this. And then all you want to do is bring them to justice. I mean, yeah. I burn with the desire to stop these people. I know we can beat them if we just believe we can and break the trance. You agree to Sheriff Mack? Yeah, I mean, it is. And we are in a trance, and the brainwashing has, uh, continues. And the, the worst... Uh, accomplice with the government brainwashing is the mainstream media. I mean, they are all over it, you know. Uh, They're bought uh, and paid for. Oh, totally bought and paid for. And it's almost like a, a separate branch of, uh, or just another leg of the Well, branch it turns of out MSNBC got hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money in the bailout. Secretly. Yeah. No wonder when they would ask Bernanke where'd the money go, he'd say, I'm not going to tell you. Right. I mean, Rachel Maddow and these people are actually taxpayer paid to right. sit there and say, if you don't want government run health care, you're a racist. Right. I mean, they are the people trying to create racism. God bless you, Jeff. I'm glad you could talk to Josh there. Well, yeah, we do need to use the military on the streets. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what? Why do you I mean, <laughs> move to Guatemala yeah. then, buddy? If you yeah. want, move to China, you'll get see plenty of it. Yeah. Uh, Bill in Florida, you're on the air. We got to move quick now. Thanks for holding. You're on the air with Sheriff Richard Mack. Hey, Mr. Jones. Hey, buddy. Hey, I'm the one that sent the article from Homestead Reserve Base about the police officers going over and detaining that uh, suspect. But it just doesn't stop there on this little base that thinks it can. It's a uh, it's a lot of brainwash, and I see them all the time pulling uh, uh, people over on the public roads and waiting for the deputy sheriffs to come in to give them tickets. <laughs> they they pull them over and then tattletale on them to the deputy. Oh yeah, they have they have all over the country <laughs> DUI checkpoints, sometimes 50 miles from a base with oh. armed marines. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, any sheriff in this country should put a stop to all of those. Well, I mean, the old, even 20 years whether ago. They're done, whether they're done by the military or the state. I was about to say. Those are wrong. Uh, exactly. No, yeah. But I mean, exactly. now it's not just checkpoints, it's troops. Look, I have the newscast. I'm going to get it added. Fox News in New York, where they go, we've made 2,000 arrests at Army checkpoints right. in the middle of the And they're driving families under high-powered X-ray scanners. Right. And, and and historically speaking, who was the best one at stopping everybody and checking for papers? I mean, we actually do that now in America and make excuses and the rationalization of our Josh caller to say that that's okay in America. Uh, that's what, Josh, I'm going to tell you right now, that's what scares me about America, that you, an officer in the military, can say something like that and tell us there's something wrong with us for being afraid of those types of things going on when that is an exact Hand me down from Nazi Germany. Well, that, that guy needs to read the Founding Fathers because well, you think we're radical? I mean, the Founding Fathers said, arm up and attack anybody acts like this. They said, yeah. you better protect liberty, and even if you're fully awake, you're probably not going to be able to keep it. They were like, yeah. you better be on your toes, ready to, ready to face down corruption, and even if you are, you're probably not going to keep it. Yeah. I mean, they had to fight for seven years, total hell to get that. I mean, what, what do you people think? All this stuff came for free? The U.S. is only land. Why has it been so wealthy? Because it had a little bit of freedom, you morons. And when we lose that, we lose it all, you jackasses, and our kids will be slaves. I'm sorry, but that Josh guy makes me want to throw up. His condescending attitude and all of it. You're right. <laughs> uh, finishing up, Bill, are you in the military or you just read about this? Uh, I'm, I'm retired. I'm the one that sent the article in, and it was on our base website. But, see, our wing commander gave us a... Uh, a uh, commander's call and he told us he was going to have the security forces make their presence known out here to the public for pu public viewing and because we had a murder there at that circle k about two it's years all ago. just it's always an excuse it's all right. acclamation yeah there there was a murder so we got to do this there was 9-11 so we got to destroy your constitution there's this uh, there's guns in mexico so we got to take your guns by the right. way the government gave it to them that's right isn't that wonderful yeah 
And it's illegal, and it's breaking international law, and it's all the biggest part of corruption that there ever was. But this is still, uh, just ask Josh, this is still a great place. So, Bill, know, everything's fine. Uh, anything else?